Hello everyone, so tonight I was asked if you could get a light sensor to trigger a motor. Um, and I've got a couple of different options for how you could code this, but the wiring is exactly the same. So let's just go through the wiring to make sure that that is all um, sorted out. So I'm just gonna turn the battery pack off for a second. So battery pack, make sure your batteries are all in the right way around. Obviously you've got a negative black lead, positive red lead going to the top left of the crumble. I say top left because I want the word crumble at the bottom to be the right way around and I want to see the chips, that's the front. So top left, negative positive, that's putting power into the crumble. I've got my motor obviously coming off one of the motor ports and I've got motor port number one here. So the red positive, black negative going to my motor. Now the light sensor is essentially a resistor. So what I'm doing is I'm putting a positive feed from it from straight from my batch pack, so from a plus terminal, I'm using a red wire to the plus terminal of the light sensor. I'm then taking the negative into the A terminal on the crumble board. Okay, and what I'm going to say to that A terminal is I want you to detect how much current is coming in. Uh, and then determine what, what to do with the motor based on how much is coming in. So this is going to be a positive feed, but it's going to be disrupted um, by how much light is getting access to this light sensor here, and that will determine how much is coming through the A terminal. So the first code we're going to look at is this one here. So what I've got is a do forever loop. It says let T, so I've assigned a variable T, to analog A. Now, calling it analog A, A is obviously the terminal on the crumble board that I want it to be detecting. Saying that it's analog isn't, it means it's not going to be either high or low, which is digital. It could be a range. It could be a whole range of numbers. Um, so let T be what, however much light is coming through and therefore how much terminal A is detecting. And then I'm going to say motor one forward at analog A percent. Now, I could just say T percent, analog A, it'd, it'd be exactly the same thing. Um, and in fact, I probably wouldn't even need that let T equals analog A part in there. It probably would work without it. Let's just, the reason I put that in is because you can actually see what is going on with the variable here. So if I turn my um, motor on, uh, sorry, my, my battery pack on, you can see this is what the, the um, actual thing is doing. So the, the, the actual number is for analog A. So it gives you a nice little indication using a variable, but you could get away without using that variable at all and just use that one bit of code, move motor one forward at analog A. Um, but this is what it's doing. And I'm gonna cover the light sensor with my finger like this. Oh, and you'll see what happens to that variable. So as you can see, if I cover it up, you'll see it goes less and less and less and less. Down to zero if I put my finger right over it. Oh, I can almost get it to zero. Okay, so what this is doing is it's saying, um, actually it's not, it's not running this one yet. Let's run this one, press play. It's gonna move it forward at this percentage. So at the moment, obviously the highest it can go is 100%. So it's moving it quite fast. The motor is moving quite fast. But as I start to cover the light sensor and that light dips, there, the speed of the motor should decrease as well. So let's have a quick look. So there's the motor, and I'm going to start to press my finger over this. Watch the motor. Till I'm completely over the sensor and it's stopped. I'm going to start revealing my finger again, uh, revealing the light sensor. Here we go. So the more light it gets, the faster the engine will go. Okay, so that's one way to do it. Another way to do it, and let's just check whether it does actually work with just that bit of code in. So let's get rid of that and just put that one bit of code in there. And let's see if it still works. Play. Yep. So you're controlling the speed of that with the light to the light sensor. Brilliant, so it'll just work with just that. Okay, the next thing, let me just stop that for a second. The next bit of code we're gonna look at is this one down here. So let's have a quick look at this. And what this is saying is, 
So I've still got my variable, let t be analog a, so it's detecting it. But if t drops below 50, make the motor go. Otherwise, keep the motor stopped. So in this one, if the light goes below a certain level, it's going to trigger the motor to go. So maybe you have an instance where um, you've got a robot and when it sat in the dark, it will motorize itself out of the dark into the light or something like that. I don't know. But that bit of code should do that. So when T gets less than 50, it's going to start the motor up. So let's press play on this one and we'll see if it works. So the motor isn't moving yet because we've got plenty of light. But if I start to cover the light and remember, this is not analog. It won't speed up and slow down. It'll either be on or off because I've got the motor either going forward at 100 percent or it's stopped. OK, that's, that's my selection there, if then else. So it's either going to be on or it's going to be off. So let's see if we can dim the light enough and the motor should go at full speed as soon as it drops below 50. Oh, battery, oh, battery pack is on. So let's just drop that light. There it is. As soon as I give it light, it'll stop. Um, and just in case you didn't know, the red light on the crumble board there is just to show that the, crumb, the motor is turning. Uh, and that red light will still carry on, even if you haven't got the motor attached. It will show you that there will be a motor running um, if that light goes on. So. so there you go, two ways to use a light sensor and a motor. Now, obviously, you can reverse that if you wanted it to stop when it gets dark. Then all you would do is just uh, move these things around. So you'd have... If the light drops below 50, stop. Um, otherwise, I want you to keep going forward at 100%. If we played that, the motor would be going until it gets dark. And then it would stop. So maybe if it's a solar powered car, it's fine when the daylight is, it's detecting lots of daylight. But then when the daylight runs out, you probably want to save energy. So it stops, you know, that's a, one implication for that. Um, and similarly with this one, so yeah, to get it the opposite, so that the um, on this one, so that it would actually speed up when it gets dark rather than slow down when it gets dark, you'd need to introduce this back in um, the let TV analog A because what you want to do is figure out what the maximum light that is going to be. So, one hundred and sixty something is the maximum light that we get. One hundred. 40, oh, 200, we're up to 200 there, 205. Great, so what's happening on this version is it's slowing down, isn't it, when we cover the light, but if we wanted it to go the other way around to so speed up when we cover the light, we'd have to essentially do a uh, negative, we do a 200, let's do 210, take away analog A. And that would mean it would be running very slowly or not at all until you covered the light and then it would go faster. There you go. And remember, if you go into negative numbers, it will probably make the motor spin the other way. So <laughs> let's try increasing this. So 250, take away analog A. So now it's going, I think, the other way. And if you, I don't know. Have a play with that. Maybe it has to be less. Let's do 150. And then, yeah, that's better. And then you can see it. <laughs> You're never really going to get it to zero because it's going to be very. It's analog, isn't it? So it's going to be really difficult to get. So covered up, it's going full pelt. Let go, it's actually going in reverse because there's a little bit of light slipping through and I changed it to 140. But anyway, hope that helps.